Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You wanting South Asia news line and here are the top stories we're tracking to you on Friday, the 29th of September. Jay Shankar meets US counterpart Blinken, Nijas killing given a miss in talks. Karima Baloch's husband blames Pakistan ISI for her killing, questions Canada's silence. And Maldives set to hold presidential election runoff. Campaign wraps up. And now for all the details. Indian Foreign Minister S. J. Shankar met his American counterpart Antony Blinken on Thursday, holding discussions over a wide range of topics, including the groundwork of the India-US 2 plus 2 meeting. The meeting was held hours after Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, who has accused India for the killing of Khalistani terrorist Hardeep Singh Nijjar, said that he was sure Blinken would raise the issue of the killing during the meeting. However, there was no confirmation whether the topic was raised as the State Department statement followed following the meeting made no mention of Niger's killing or of Canada as a whole. Traditional Canadian allies, including the United States, have taken a conscious approach to the matter. However, India's neighbours, Sri Lanka and Bangladesh, have openly backed New Delhi, with both countries terming Canada as a safe haven for the terrorist. And a suicide bombing in Balochistan's Mastang district on Friday killed more than 50 people and injured dozens at a religious gathering to mark the birthday of Prophet Muhammad. The injured were immediately rushed to hospitals. Hours after the suicide blast in Balochistan, another blast ripped through a mosque in Khyber Pangtunkwa, which also borders Afghanistan, killing at least two people. The mosque's roof collapsed in the blast, local broadcaster Neo News reported adding that about 30 to 40 people were trapped under the rubble. The death toll was likely to rise further in both the incidents. No group had claimed responsibility till the last reports came in. And moving on, the husband of Baloch political activist Karima Baloch, who was mysteriously killed in Canada, has accused Pakistan's ISI for her assassination and questioned Canadian government's silence in the matter. A report. The husband of Baloch political activist Karima Baloch, who was mysteriously killed in Canada in 2020, has accused Pakistan's spy agency ISI of killing her and questioned the Canadian government's interest in the matter. He made the remarks as he participated in a protest in Geneva to highlight Pakistani atrocities in Balochistan outside the UN office in Geneva. A large number of Baloch dissidents in foreign countries now feel unsafe after the death of Karima in Canada and journalist Sajid Hussain in Sweden in 2020. We uh, believe that the Pakistani intelligence agency is behind Karima's killing because they have also been trying to kill other activists abroad because we believe that the Canadian government and the Canadian justice system uh, didn't do well for Karima Baloch. She died in a suspicious manner, in suspicious circumstances, and we have been requesting the Canadian government uh, to investigate her case. But we have seen no interest from the Canadian government. An activist said Karima was bravely engaged in her struggle despite her maternal uncle also being abducted and killed by the Pakistani agencies and questioned Canada and Sweden's so-called democratic values if they do not probe these cases. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Sindhi Foundation organized a day-long poster campaign in front of the UNHRC office in Geneva this week to highlight the plight of Sindhis in Pakistan. The posters depicted pictures of several Sindhi political activists, journalists and other intellectuals who were forcibly abducted, 
tortured and brutally killed by Pakistan's secret agencies. The campaign also raised the issue of forced conversion of Sindhi Hindu girls and agricultural land being usurped by Pakistan's army generals. An activist said they want the UN to conduct a referendum for freedom from Pakistan. I have seen him, you know. The message is very, very clear. The Pakistan is hurdle and uh, is uh, really kind of the uh, a curse on the earth. And uh, no one is happy. Neither the people who live in Sindh or Balochistan or Pakhtunkhwa or the Sraikis, Hazaras, uh, Chitral, Gilgit, all those uh, oppressed people, they want to get rid of this country, want freedom from independence from the Pakistan. And Maldives President Ibrahim Mohamed Soli and his main challenger Mohamed Muizi wrapped up their election campaigns on Friday as the country geared up for crucial runoff election on Saturday. Results from September 9th's first round showed Muizi ahead but short of the 50% needed to win outright. While the incumbent President Soli had championed an India first policy, his challenger Muizi, supported by former President Abdullah Yamin's pro China PPM party, which has launched an India out campaign promising to remove a small Indian military presence from the island nation. The Saturday polls will thus be decisive to determine whether New Delhi or Beijing wins the competition for influence over Maldives. And Hindus across India on Friday thronged their sacred places of worship on the first day of Pitrapaksh to pay homage to their ancestors and for the salvation of the departed souls. Hindu devotees in India on Friday thronged the holy town of Haridwar on the first day of Pitrapaksh or fortnight for the ancestors and held prayers for the salvation of departed souls. According to the Hindu tradition, Pitrapaksh is a 16 lunar day period which falls in the months of September to October beginning with the full moon day that occurs immediately after the Ganesh Chaturthi festival. Devotees were seen performing rituals and pray for the well-being of ancestors' souls. और ये बड़ा ही देव तुल्य स्थान है यहाँ पितरों को जो है सीधा स्वर्ग की प्राप्ति होती है और उनकी आत्मा की शांति के लिए हमें यहाँ उनका स्नात करना है जिससे कि हमारी माता जी की आत्मा को शांति मिले और उन्हें स्वर्ग की प्राप्ति हो. Similar scenes were witnessed in Eastern Gaya, where hundreds of people performed rituals during the ongoing Pitrapaksh Mela. People offer special food items to their ancestors as part of the age-old ritual. These food items are cooked in silver or copper vessels and served on a banana leaf or utensils made of dried leaves. <laughs> Devotees believe that once the rituals are performed, the souls of their ancestors shall be dissolved of all sins and they will be freed from the cycle of birth and death. Well, that's all in tonight's edition. We'll see the same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.